Finally, and this is an important point, why don't we see everything as this? Why do we see a material world that's devoid of consciousness? We don't see consciousness here. Why does all this appear devoid of consciousness? Because if we, if we say everything's consciousness, it clearly doesn't look like that. And the reason is, comes back to the, the map and the territory idea. What is out there is the dynamic, structured, aware field. Here is the representation inside us, what we see are the shapes, colors, forms. But consciousness is not part of the map. It's like if you, if you look at a map and you ask, where am I? All you see is a little arrow saying, you are here, pointing to where you are in the map. And it's the same with consciousness. We create this whole representation of the world and the representation doesn't have consciousness represented within it. And then you have this little arrow saying consciousness is here. This little point in the map, in the center of the map, is where consciousness is. And we don't see that the whole map is actually an appearance in consciousness, but it doesn't itself contain consciousness in the representation. It's a bit like looking at, you know, you look at a movie and you realize the movie's made of light and you then start examining the movie to see where the light comes from. You'll never find it. So we perceive an unconscious material world and wonder where consciousness comes from. And this is why the hard problem arises in the first place. So let me just finish with a few just quotes from scientists, mystics. This is Eddington. Physics is the study of the structure of consciousness. The stuff of the world is mind stuff. This is a hundred years ago, one of the great Scientists in relativity followed Einstein. Another great scientist at that time, physicist, the universe begins to look more like a great thought than a great machine. It's a better book of the great liberation. Matter derives from mind, not mind from matter. It is not so much that you are in the cosmos as that the whole cosmos is in you. The whole cosmos is in is the manifestation within our own personal reality as we know it. And of course, the person who started this conference off, Nisargadatta, said it probably the most accurately, the world you perceive is made of consciousness. What you call matter is consciousness itself. So, thank you. Yes, I know we're, the whole session's running late, but we can take a couple of questions. Okay, so the question is, if everything is consciousness, mm -hmm. and everything therefore is in alignment with the light, which is the immovable at that point, then, then what's all the mental masturbation about? Then yeah. what's all the talk about? Why do we then have to fight about it, go to war about it, have to spend treaties about it, arguing about it? Well... Two levels of answer to that question. One, one, not everybody realizes that. And even when we do realize it, we're not living it. You know, that's what we're talking about, awakening. What's the purpose of the not awakening? What? Said, I, there must be a purpose in the non-awakening itself. Okay. Right? Um, no. Okay, because? I don't, well, yes and no. Okay. If, yes and no, or, or neither yes nor no, if you want to take me. Or both. Like, like I see it as, yes, there's a, there's a purpose to the, in the awakening, to awaken. Why are we not awakened in the first place? I think that we see the evolution of this field of being. It evolves into more and more complex forms. Yes. And as those forms get more complex, so the consciousness gets more complex. And there comes a point with beings like us where the consciousness becomes reflective and actually recognizes it is conscious. And that's the first stage of awakening. We call it self-reflective consciousness. Oh, I am conscious. And then, oh, well, who is the I that's conscious? Oh, here, there's me. This I lives in a body inside my head. And we fall into a whole ego mode of operating in the world, which is a halfway stage of awakening. And then full awakening is beginning to see that is just another arising in consciousness. But it's that ego mode which gets us then trapped into looking for this, conflicting with the world, fighting each other, fighting ourselves. So I see it as part of the process of awakening to the full discovery of recognizing that everything is consciousness. So I see it's part of an evolutionary unfolding. So it's how consciousness becomes conscious of itself. Yeah, yeah.
We are the universe's way of recognizing there is only consciousness. Yeah. Russell. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, a question. Uh, where did this all begin? That is, is there consciousness that comes out of the Big Bang, or is there consciousness before the Big Bang that always existed? And the other part of the same question is, this sounds an awful lot like the world is made of God. That is, uh, panpsychism sounds like a theory that consciousness fills the universe and there is no way to either verify that or contradict it. I'm mm -hmm. sure you're familiar with that idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so it troubles me as a, as a scientist to say, I understand the idea that you're proposing, it's an interesting idea, but how can I determine whether it's true or not? I'm not sure. Um, I think, I mean, your first, let's take the first question. I mean, first of all, the Big Bang is just an idea we have. It's just a current idea in the mind about how the universe began. But who knows what really happened? But if there was some, there was some beginning, what I'm saying is what we call the matter energy of the Big Bang is just another form that awareness was taking on, which we call energy, matter, space, and time. They're all forms that the field is taking on. And so the... I mean, to put it another way, you know, people have been talking about you know, the quantum field and consciousness being part of the quantum field. I'm saying no. The quantum field is a manifestation of consciousness. It is how consciousness begins to manifest is what we call the quantum field. So it, everything is ultimately an aware field. You can call it, yes, we can call it God, whatever. So you would say it's, ob it's obvious that consciousness is primary and Big Bang, Big Bangs come and go and consciousness is the ground of all being. Yes, yes. I think, uh, as I say, it's not a question of, is this provable, but if we take this if we take this view, does it then allow us to have a completely new way of looking at quantum physics, which might actually start making more sense? So, time, whatever it is, calls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.